Having worked for a German company, I've traveled to Deutschland over 70 times. Germans are sticklers when it comes to meetings starting on time or trains or buses staying on schedule. But I truly did not understand punctuality until I arrived at a Heidelberg gift shop 15 minutes before it was going to close. Ho! Ho! The clerk barked. I almost raised my hands. You must leave. I insisted there were still 15 minutes to go. Kirk sighed. In those 15 minutes, I must take care of the cash register, sweep the floors, and dust the shelves. Now, push, push, leave, and come back in time and earlier. I'll be the same and the door slam behind me. Punctuation is just one aspect of the German business culture. It's also characterized by meticulous planning and adherence to rules, great work ethic, remarkable productivity, and a global reputation on quality. You can unlock amazing success by partnering with Germany, given the fact that they are the third largest exporter and importer in the world despite only being the 19th largest population. They boast the most secure banking systems in Europe and their innovations are known around the world. Therefore, to work with a German partner, you have to understand their cultural nuances. Let me give you a few examples. I was asked uh, with a dozen of my German colleagues to create a brand for a new product. And when it was my turn to raise my hand, I gave my proposal. Immediately I heard, that is crazy. That is a stupid brand. That will never work. And I, they waited for me to respond. Of course, I'm steaming here saying, oh my God, that is personal. That idea is part of my soul. Many people believe that a German could walk into an empty room, close the door, and start an argument with themselves. <laughs> Debate is a sport within the German culture. Their goal is to improve good ideas and to exit flawed ideas. But during these arguments, they never intend to be personal. They basically argue about topics and ideas, not people. I remember two of my German colleagues were arguing furiously for 20 minutes, and then they burst out laughing at the end. It made me think, if I could put more productive debates in my organization, how much better things would be. So if you're proposing a new product or service to a German partner, you must be prepared to debate and push back on They expect that. And again, the idea is to improve that product or to improve that service, but never to go after you personally. Germany is a country of thousands and thousands of laws and rules. It affects everybody in their German lifestyles. Here's a few examples. Your household garbage has to be separated by plastic, glass, paper, and organic. All retail stores must open and close at specific times. It is against the law to wash your car at home. It is against the law to informally address a police officer by saying, hey officer, uh, Germany has what's called quiet times, it's their mindfulness times. Therefore, it is against law to have loud noises or even tune in a piano during quiet times. You can lawfully drive in the nude. <laughs> But it is 
unlawful to get out of your car without any clothes on. <laughs> and it is against the law to run out of gas on the German Autobahn. <laughs> now, the high-speed German Autobahn is a real conflict with all these rules and laws because various parts of the Autobahn, you can drive as fast. There's no rules. So I was driving between Frankfurt and Stuttgart in a little Volkswagen. And I had my pedal to the metal, and I was maybe getting 80 miles an hour of this little thing. And behind me, this tribe of Porsche and BMWs and Mercedes were coming behind me, flashing their lights, and then zoom, zoom, 120 to 150 miles an hour right by me. Every one of these beasts went by, and my hands were already shaking for life, but the car would shake as they go by. The Autobahn has these nice bends at the curves. Just like a Grand Prix, you can go around as fast as you want. But I'm still haunted by an image that I saw going around the curve. There was a red BMW convertible in the limbs of a tree. Just like a bird's nest. It showed me there's no real fender grinders on the Autobahn. But the Autobahn is interesting how it's helped the, the German auto industry because the drivers insist on more speed, more performance, more comfort, more reliability, and that step puts high standards around the world as it comes to uh, luxury cars. I was in Germany, in Heidelberg, the morning after the German soccer team beat South Korea in the semifinals of the 2002 World Cup. Soccer, or what they call football, is amazingly popular throughout the country. So I was looking forward to the joy and discussions and debates about the games and so forth when they all arrived. But I was surprised when they arrived just they were polite, good mornings, and then they immediately went to work. In their offices, shuffling paper, writing and sign, and hitting keyboards. And it was only later on during the noon period that that joy and laughter and debate came about the soccer game and what was going to happen in the finals and things like that. But as that 45 minute period ended, <coughs> the Germans went quiet again back to their offices, signed by a team with paperwork and computers. Germans are proud of their work ethic. Work over play is almost like a religion. <coughs> Procrastination, that's a sin. And over time, that's for the lazy. And by working, every minute, they become one of the most productive countries in the world. So if you're attending a meeting with a German, make sure you not too much chat, stay on the agenda. They'll appreciate you not wasting their minutes because they're very productive people. However, after work, they'll talk, laugh about anything, especially over a few beers. My last example is, I was excited to demonstrate a brand new high-speed digital printer that not only printed paper, but put covers, pasted, and, and paperbacks came out the back without anybody touching them. So paper, colorful paperbacks would pop out of this system. And I was going, this is pretty cool. My German colleagues were not that excited about it. One picked up a paperback and furiously went through the pages. Another picked up a paperback and picked it up and down like a yo-yo. Third one just tore their parts of the seams. And they shook their head and said, obviously, this needs more work. So my team went back to work on it, and they discovered a faster drying glue for the binding. And we had another demonstration, and my German colleagues looked at it and said, hmm. I guess this is acceptable, but you've got to keep on working on this all the time. And they gave me a goal. Pretend this print system was creating all the Harry Potter paperbacks around, sold around the world. 
That's the kind of quality we want you to go after. Continuous improvement is in the DNA of Germans. Their commitment to quality is known around the world. It is that tenacity by the Germans that is the foundation of their remarkable results. So if you're jointly working on a product or service with a German partner, your diligence on quality is indispensable. They appreciate your focus, but will always expect you to go beyond excellence. In summary, Germans are productive because they manage every minute. They debate because they know that it, create, it creates more ideas and increases the speed of innovation. Their rules and laws are like a compass to them. And their quality focus enables them to export high value products around the world. So to unlock that incredible success in Germany, you have to align with their work ethic and their values, and you will cre create amazing achievements. And if you assimilate some of these ideas into your own organization, you will, uh, you will unlock a lot of ideas and success yourself. Thank you, Dr. Schoen of Venusay. Thank you.